Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank God for allowing us to come for another opportunity, another day. Because truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to introduce myself. This is Suffolk and Bishop elect Frankie L. Quinn, pastor of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. And I'm certainly excited to, to be with you here in Erie, Pennsylvania. And we're affiliate of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith. Uh, where the lead presiding prelate is Bishop Lambert Wade Gates of Indianapolis, Indiana. And um, we certainly do thank God uh, for being a part of the New York, New England, Pennsylvania States Council, uh, which is representative of, uh, we call it for short, Nipain States Council, where our diocesan bishop is Bishop Clarence Turner and Lady Dorothy Turner of Rochester, New York. And we certainly do praise and thank God for all of you that are here on today. And I thank God for Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church where I pastor, and I thank God for its leaders, uh, Pastor Lois Duck and Evangelist Stephanie Arrington, and also we thank God for uh, Minister Grady Davis, and we thank God for a host of our, our leaders, our deacons. We thank God for them as well. And we thank God for Mother Louise Davis. And I thank God for my wife, uh, Lady Tracy Quinn. And we certainly do praise God uh, for all of you today that has joined us in this particular session. This particular session is our, our Sunday school session. Um, I'm just going to be with you just for an hour. And then we'll come back um, at 11 o'clock and I'll present the morning uh, message. I want to keep things as, as, as normal as possible as far as our teaching and our schedule goes. Um, I believe that God has called us for these times and you know we use our various means and our different means just to stay on track. And um, Sunday school has definitely been a part of my life, my saved life, and I enjoy Sunday school and I enjoy that higher learning. and. Um, something about the Word of God. I believe that through Sunday school you get something extra. Something extra comes to you. Um, those people who don't go to Sunday school, um, it's just my opinion, I just put it that way, uh, they miss out on uh, some of the nuggets that God drops on people who do go to Sunday school. Anytime you're exposed to the Word of God, um, God uh, gives you something. Amen. Uh, his word, the Bible says, won't return unto him void, but it'll accomplish whereunto it is sent. So I thank God for you all that are, are, are coming online and, and tuning in to this particular part of the service. And I want to go before the Lord in prayer. I want to uh, remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord himself will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. I uh, remember uh, the medical workers um, and the doctors that are on the front line, uh, that the Lord will bless them and that he'll bring our government together, um, the state and the local and the uh, federal government together, uh, that they'd be operating as one so that they can be able to uh, support uh, this great nation. Also to uh, pray for the body of Christ and the the churches worldwide uh, that will come together in unity and that will be able to be uh, one. I believe that in this time that God truly wants us to seek him like never before um, and to call upon him and to make changes in our lives. When we come out of this, um, we should be better. We should be stronger, um, not, not weaker. We should be stronger spiritually uh, mentally and physically, and we should be stronger even in our social love one to another. In all aspects, 
I believe that this, this has slowed us down and to the point where we should all be building ourselves up. Um, the time for despair and discouragement is over. The shock is over. Uh, we're living in these times now wherein we should uh, literally uh, focus on the Lord and focus on building ourselves up, uh, seeking the Lord through prayer and fasting uh, so that we can, be, can become strong. So let us pray for those things as well as we get into our Sunday school lesson. But I just want to pray uh, in the name of Jesus. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We certainly do thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your love and your kindness. We praise you, Lord, for all things. Hallelujah. We praise you for your greatness and your, your joy. We ask you, Lord, that you bless men and women and children everywhere that you save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Remember men and women and children, Lord. Remember those that are on the front lines uh, in all aspects of employment, those essential workers, even our doctors and, and those uh, medical staff that support and bless our nation, Lord, that we'll come together, that we'll be with one accord, that we'll be able to stand. Let it be a renewal, a time of transformation in the name of Jesus. Let this spring season spring forth with new ideas and new growth and new strength. Let us come out stronger and better. Let us come out with more greater unity and love one for another. Father, we thank you and praise you. Give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And I want you to uh, turn with me today um, following our uh, Union Press uh, Gospel Sunday School lesson, amen, and um, uh, one that we've been uh, affiliated with down through the years. And in this particular book and in this particular lesson is lesson number five, March 29th, uh, 2000, I mean 2020. And um, the subject of our particular lesson is the suffering servant. And it begins in uh, Isaiah 52, verses 13, and then it expands all the way through Isaiah 53 and uh, down to the conclusion of that chapter, uh, verse number 12. Um, I really, I really, really enjoy uh, this particular uh, passage of scripture because it talks about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It talks about him who loves us and gave his life for us. And uh, he himself is depicted here as the suffering servant, the suffering servant. And um, he gave his life for you and I, as you know, the gospel message is, is placed in this particular chapter. Uh, if you remember in the book of Acts, uh, Philip, the, 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 the eunuch, um, who was also a deacon in the church, came across, I'm sorry, uh, Philip, uh, the deacon in the church, came across an Ethiopian eunuch um, that was headed, I believe, back to Africa. And um, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch was reading the scripture, and he was reading the scripture uh, out of the book of Isaiah and Philip begins to preach unto him Christ and uh, then the, he posed the question and uh, the question basically related to uh, who was this uh, prophet talking about and he told him it, it was about Jesus and then and when Philip got through preaching Christ uh, he said here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized and Philip told him, if you believe, thou shalt uh, be baptized. And he believed and he was baptized in the name of Jesus. So uh, this particular scripture it is exciting and it is a scripture that really um, tells us about the sufferings of Christ, why he suffered, and his exaltation, and his exaltation. So I want to begin reading at the book of Isaiah uh, 52, and I want to begin reading starting at verse 13. And notice the scripture, it says, Behold, 
My servant uh, shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. And um, this particular verse, uh, 52 and 13, it, it's kind of, uh, I don't want to say it's backwards, but it, it exalts the end of Christ. Um, it, it really displays um, when he goes through his suffering, what he's going to accomplish uh, uh, in, in relation to his going through. In other words, uh, it looks toward the end of the thing. It looks toward the end when he's done suffering, what shall he bring? And it says that my servant, behold, anytime in the scripture you see the word behold, that means to pause, stop, take notice, because something very spectacular is about to take place. And he says, behold, my servant. And uh, the servant here is Jesus Christ, who uh, submitted himself, he submitted himself uh, to the father. To, he said, if you prepare me a body, I'll go down and I'll redeem them for you. Amen. So and, and he is the servant, the one that was, was submitted to the Father in all aspects of life. And notice he shall deal prudently. In other words, that he shall be wise and he shall have great understanding. And, and when he, what he will accomplish, he will accomplish through wisdom and knowledge and understanding, deal prudently. And notice he says, and he shall be what? Exalted and extol those words are are, are are great words when it when it relates to jesus christ because we know that his kingdom shall be no end his kingdom shall come with power and authority and and he himself is going to sit down at the right hand of god high and lift it up and so he's going to be exalted and extolled notice what it says and very high Hallelujah. He's going to be the Lord of lords and the kings of kings. Thank you, Lord. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's no other Lord like our Lord. There's no other Savior like our Savior. Hallelujah. That is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Now notice verse 14, it says, as many uh, were astonished at thee, his visage was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. So that relates to the, the suffering of Jesus, realizing he not only died for you and I, brothers and sisters, but he died for the whole world. He died, not only died for the whole world, he died for the sins past, he died for the sins present, and he died for the sins that were yet to come. He died for eternity of sins so that, so that, uh, um, that we would be uh, in this world blameless before God in love if we believe on Jesus. Notice what he says, as many were astonished at thee. They were astonished. They were shocked because when he suffered on that cross, when he, uh, before he got to that cross, those Roman soldiers were uh, very skilled. They were skilled at, at, at crucifixion. They developed crucifixion, if you'll have me to say it, uh, to such a way where uh, they beat, they whipped, they punched, they spit, they humiliated him. Um, and, uh, so it was, it was a total, uh, how can you say it? It was a total way of uh, humiliation of an individual uh, to wherein they used that uh, to keep other people in line. In other words, this could happen to you if you didn't obey, if you don't obey us. But they didn't realize that what they were doing uh, when they did it to Christ. They were, they were putting those punishments and those uh, beatings and those whippings. He took that for you and I. He, 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 his visage was marred. They went, if you allow me to say it in a different way, they went crazy 
beating our Savior, beating and whipping our and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to where the scripture says, as as many as were astonished at thee. They were they were like, Wow, is this him? Is this the one that 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 Jesus that that claimed to be the Christ? Notice his visage was marred more than any man. So uh, believe me, brothers and sisters, that nobody was beat like Jesus was beat. Nobody suffered like Jesus suffered. And notice it says, and his form was more than the sons of men. In verse 15, it says, so shall he sprinkle many nations. And that sprinkle many nations is a relation to the blood that he would shed. Uh, in other words, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, Moses, um, he would take the blood, dip it in his, hips, hyssop, and sprinkle, sprinkle the people, sprinkle the altar and things that were associated with it. And with that sprinkling um, of the blood, it would be a representative of cleansing. In other words, Jesus died for us as a trespass offering, an offering for sin. And, and by him giving up his life and him, him, him shedding his blood, he shed his blood for our sins. He was a substitute for you and I on that cross, the blood of Jesus. Notice it says, so shall he sprinkle many nations. And many nations, uh, not just the Jewish nation, but nations all over the world. He died for all nations, for all people, hallelujah, so that all could have a right to the tree of life. And notice it says, and kings shall shut their mouths at him. The kings um, were wondered about Jesus. They didn't have an understanding about him. And when it's all said and done, they shall sh shut their mouths at him for that which had not been told them shall they see that which have not uh, been told them uh, in the beginning Christ and his sufferings were hid it was it had to be revealed about who he was and what his mission was and and brothers and sisters it has to be revealed to us even today thank you Lord how great uh, a savior he is it has to be revealed to us even today um, remember Peter, thank you, Lord. Uh, Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And, and they went through a litany of different people. But Jesus said, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter stood and said, well, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus turned to him and said, blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Knowing who Jesus is has to be a revelation given unto you by the Father. Uh, it has to be a revelation given unto you by the Father. And that's what was happening in these particular scriptures. Uh, the suffering of Christ and his mission and what he would do was hid in the Old Testament. But when more light had came, when the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit came and, and the preaching of the apostles and the prophets in the New Testament, it gave more light and more understanding uh, that your spiritual eyes and your spiritual understanding could be opened into the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you get that right look at Jesus, when you begin to understand his purpose and his plan and you accept him in your life, your life is changed. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All old things have passed away. The word says all things have become new. All things have become new. You have to have faith in Christ. And in order to be saved, in order to be delivered from uh, uh, your, the sins and your penalties of sins and, and be healed uh, from the effect of sin. You have to believe in Jesus to have your mind transformed, to be, to re, to be renewed in your spirit. And when you believe in Jesus and have faith in him, then he expects you to get baptized uh, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins 
And then as you repent, the scripture says, you are filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's the complete process uh, whereby uh, salvation occurs. Salvation um, uh, begins on your belief in Christ. And once you believe in him, uh, the scripture says that thou art saved. And then when you, uh, because you believe and because you are saved, you get baptized you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And God fills you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost to, in order to walk with God, to be able to understand God, to be able to walk in the spirit. That's why the scripture says, I'm kind of getting into my lesson when I uh, go into 11 o'clock. But that's why the scripture says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uh, for the spirit of life, which is in Christ, has made us free from the law of sin and death. I want to be free today, brothers. And that's what the suffering of our servant did. It caused us to be free. Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord. So as we move back uh, to our lesson, uh, looking at uh, verse 15, it says, so shall he sprinkle many nations, uh, and the kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had uh, not heard shall they consider. So um, basically that scripture is just meaning that the revelation of Jesus will come to kings. Remember the uh, apostle Paul, he preached Christ to King Agrippa. And one king said, Paul, thou almost persuadest me to become a Christian. Thank you, Lord. So he was considering the things that were preached and taught about Jesus being the Savior. And Paul told him, I, I wish all together you would like how I, I am, except for these chains or these bonds. So we see then our, our, our poetic message or this poetic uh, I call it the poetic gospel of Isaiah. It moves to uh, chapter 53. And notice, it says, Who have believed our report, and to whom have the arm of the Lord, uh, of the Lord revealed? Who to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? There's that revelation again about Jesus. You, you, in order to be walk with the Lord in order to understand him, he has to be revealed. And the way to get him to be revealed in your heart, you have to seek him and cry out to him in your time of need. So we see here then, he says, Isaiah says, who have believed our report? And what, I, what Isaiah was saying uh, here, who have believed our report, he was saying, who have believed the scriptures that was written about Jesus. Um, um, a lot of prophets and even uh, Moses, uh, he prophesied about Christ. Um, uh, God had even preached the gospel unto Abraham about how he was going to establish a nation and the nation would be established forever. And even in David, um, the gospel was uh, was preached that God would establish somebody on the throne forever. So that's what he was talking about uh, when he was talking about who have believed our report. You believing on Christ is so necessary to your salvation. And this type of belief is, is more than just um, uh, saying that you believe, but you believe uh, with the works of faith, with the works of faith. Because the scripture tells us faith without works is dead. So in order for you to show true belief, then you, you operate in faith. Faith in what Christ have said, hallelujah, about how to get saved and how to remain saved and to uh, walk with him. So you have to believe uh, what Jesus have said and you have to believe in his teaching, in his word, his doctrine. That shows that you believe when you put it into practice, not just saying I believe 
and do nothing with it. That's not belief unto salvation. But to believe and to actually live this thing, that's true belief. So we see here, who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord is the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, the strength of God, the power of God. Hallelujah, the, the, the salvation of God. He's the arm of the Lord. Notice, notice the scriptures. It talks about the suffering servant. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form or no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Notice, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. As you know, Jesus, uh, his, 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 his beginnings were very humble. Uh, Jesus was born in a manger. Uh, even his parents, they were uh, non-assuming uh, in their roles. They were of the lineage of David, both were, but they were non-assuming. They were uh, poor people, so to speak. And uh, Jesus, when he was born, he was born in an inn, uh, in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. So uh, it, shows, it shows that uh, what the scripture is saying, that when he is born, nobody would really take notice of him. Hallelujah. My friend, let me tell you, you know, uh, you've got to value all people because you don't know, hallelujah, Thank you, Lord, who you're sitting next to. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know who you're talking to. Uh, you've got to take uh, notice and take value of all people. So um, they didn't know uh, that he was the Christ. They didn't know that he was the Savior. There was no pomp and circumstance, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, around the birth of Jesus. Now, we know that the angels celebrated and notice who the angels went to. The angels went to the lowliest people and the lowliest craft. He went to the, the shepherds and told them to go and, and, and see this great miracle that has been done for you and I. Thank you, Lord. So, so he went. Uh, the scripture says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. Notice, have no form or no comeliness. And when they would see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Meaning that Jesus in his earthly life was not outstanding. Thank you, Lord. He was non-assuming. Um, he, he started to grow in, in his ministry. Those three, those three and a half years, his ministry picked up and it became a very popular, very, very influential. And, and, and he established the kingdom of God uh, through the apostles. But in his growing up, thank you, Lord, they were like, can any good thing come out of uh, Nazareth or Galilee? Thank you, Lord. And, and, and is this Jesus? We know his parents. We know who he is. They called him even a child of fornication. Thank you, Lord. So, so this would be uh, the setting up of Jesus. There's no beauty that when we should desire him. And also, um, he says, uh, he is, notice, despised and rejected of men. Thank you, Lord. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. And notice, this is Jesus. He is despised. The people uh, rejected him. Thank you, Lord. Uh, he was acquainted with sorrows uh, and acquainted with grief. That grief there uh, relates to uh, death. Thank you, Lord. And, and the sting of death. Uh, he, and the people uh, really didn't want anything to do with him. So they hid, as it were, their faces from him. Notice, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Thank you, Lord. They didn't like Jesus. They didn't like the Savior. They didn't, uh, people didn't gravitate toward him. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and that, don't, don't get, be discouraged by that because that had to happen. Thank you, Lord, in order for him to be put to death. Now notice verse number four. It says, surely 
He has borne our griefs. Thank you, Lord. He surely, I like that word, surely. That means of a surety. He has borne our griefs and he has carried our sorrows. And this brings me to the scripture where it talks about Jesus being able to be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He took on flesh and blood just like you and I so that he could taste death for every man. And in his exalted position now, he knows our struggles. He knows what we're going through. Amen. And he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And so therefore, he, he knows us. He knows what we're going through. So he can be a perfect savior, a savior that is able to help us in our times of need. That's why the scripture says you can come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need, in your time of trouble. Hallelujah. You don't have to fear, my friend, if you are a sinner, if you have been saved for 30 years, you can still come boldly to the throne of grace. Why do you say that, brother pastor? Because Jesus died for you. He gave his life for you, not when you were perfect, but when you were yet a sinner. Christ died for the ungodly. And because he died for you and gave his life for you, he gave his life as a ransom so that you can be saved. So he died, hallelujah, and he rose again. And he sat down at the right hand of God so you can come boldly. Thank you, Lord. You can come boldly. It doesn't matter what you have done. Hallelujah. Jesus suffered for it. Doesn't matter what it may look like, Jesus suffered for it so that he can give you power, so that he can give you deliverance and freedom from your sin. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm reminded, brothers and sisters, uh, when in the Old Testament, when they offered up sacrifices of sin, it didn't take away the condemnation of their actions. It didn't take away the condemnation of their evil deeds. And they had a remembrance of it all the time, wherein it kept them in bondage. But through Christ Jesus, hallelujah, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. He takes away the shame. He takes away the guilt. He takes away the penalty. He takes away even that which we call the, 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 the physical effects of sin to make you a new creature. He's the total package, my brothers. He's the total package, my sisters. So that's why uh, he suffered for us that we might have a right to the tree of life. So notice the scripture. Verse number four, he said, surely he has borne our griefs and he has carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. The scripture says, uh, talks about uh, cursed is anyone that hangeth on a tree. And that's why we're looking at Jesus because they didn't have the revelation of Jesus. They thought in their own minds. Thank you, Lord. They thought in their own minds that he was accursed. And he was accursed, but he was accursed for you and I. A righteous man that suffered for you and I, they didn't understand that God would use him to raise him from the dead. Hallelujah. To give us. He was a substitutionary sacrifice for you and I on that cross. Hallelujah. And they didn't understand that. Thank you, Lord. So they thought that he was accursed. But notice uh, in Isaiah 52, verse 13, Behold, my servant uh, shall be deal prudently. He shall be exalted. He shall be extolled and be very high. Hallelujah. So as they were crucifying him and putting him to death, thank you, Lord, uh, uh, he was winning. Thank you, Lord. He was winning our salvation. He was winning our deliverance. He was winning the plan and the purpose of God. He was winning. Thank you, Lord, so that we might be the children of God without rebuke, the sons of God, the daughters of God without rebuke. So we see here, brothers and sisters, in the scriptures, notice, uh, that's what brings us to verse number five, but he was wounded for our transgressions. There it is. He was wounded for you. He was wounded for me. 
for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and with his stripes we are what? Healed. Hallelujah. You can just tell your neighbor, tell your brothers and sisters that we're healed by the blood of Jesus. We're healed by the stripes that are in Jesus Christ. Deliverance is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Salvation is in Jesus. Now this healing, my friend, it goes deeper than just a physical healing. It goes to a spiritual healing. It goes to a, 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 a natural healing, a spiritual healing, and an emotional healing. Jesus, when he died, he died and healed us and gave us the total package. Hallelujah. So that we can totally be new, free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We've been healed from the power of sin, that sin has no more power over us. We've been healed from the effect of sin. Hallelujah. That, 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 that the scars that sin left in our lives, Jesus healed us. Hallelujah. And we've been healed, thank you, Lord, from the penalty of sin. That the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, we ought to clap our hands and give God a praise in this place right now because we've been healed Hallelujah, through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're clothed and in our right mind through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And what he did for us, he secured it. Hallelujah, from now unto eternity. We thank God for the blood. Tell your neighbor, we thank God for the blood. I feel like preaching up in here. We thank God for the blood. So we see here, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that with his stripes, every time they beat him, it, it, it related to your healing. Every time they smote him, it related to your healing. Every time they took him through, it related to your healing. Thank you, Lord. Notice, we all like sheep. Verse number six, we all like sheep have gone astray. Uh, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid upon him, talking about Jesus, the iniquity of us all. We all, as the Bible says, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. Thank you, Lord. That's why he concluded us all under sin, that we all might receive Jesus. We all need Jesus. Hallelujah. The poor man, the rich man, thank you, Lord, the middle class man, the white man, the black man, the brown man, the Chinese, we all need Jesus. The Asian, the Puerto Rican, hallelujah, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah, who you are. Thank you, Lord. You need Jesus. And notice, as many as received him, thank you, Lord, to them gave he what? Power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. So notice, we all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Now, let me just park right here just for a moment. Thank you, Lord. We've all turned to our own way. And, and many, many people want to do things their way. But you've got to turn and do it God's way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And few there be that go in. But broad is the way and wide is the way to the way of destruction and many go thereat. The scripture says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we've got to forsake our way. Hallelujah. We've got to forsake our thoughts. Hallelujah. We've got to uh, latch on to the new and living way. Tell your neighbor, latch on to the new and living way. Hallelujah. And that way is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. So we see here, uh, the Lord have laid upon Christ the iniquity of us all, the suffering of us all. Uh, notice verse number seven. He says, he was oppressed. Thank you, Lord. Jesus was oppressed. And he was what? Afflicted. Thank you, Lord. They beat him. They afflicted him. Uh, they humiliated him. When they stripped him uh, of his clothes, and he only had on those, 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 those loins covering his private parts, that was humiliation. Hallelujah. They humiliated the G, our Savior. 
Hallelujah. But he still, he still held true. My God, he still stood strong. Hallelujah. Knowing what he was doing was bringing forth righteousness for you and I. Notice the scriptures. It says he was oppressed and he was afflicted, uh, yet he opened not his mouth. Hallelujah. He didn't murmur. He didn't complain. He kept his eye focused on the goal. My God, my God, when you're going through your affliction, when you're going through your suffering, don't murmur and complain like the children of Israel did in the wilderness, but hold fast. Hallelujah. Hold fast to that word, to the doctrine that you've been told, knowing that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hold fast to what Christ has told you, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, he will deliver us out of them all. Don't, don't be ashamed of your suffering. Don't be ashamed of the suffering of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, for he is the power of God unto salvation. Though, my friend, people will try to talk about you, try to humiliate you, but lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory, he shall come in. Hallelujah, Jesus, he comes to see about you in your suffering. Jesus comes to see about you when you're going through. Jesus comes to see about you and deliver you out of all of your affliction. So, hallelujah. So you ought to praise him. You ought to give him thanks. My God, my God in heaven. Hallelujah. He said he was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Hallelujah. As a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Remember, from the very foundation of the world, Jesus came in, hallelujah, as the Lamb of God, hallelujah, as the one that was slain before the foundation of the world. Remember, when Jesus went to, to Jordan to be baptized of John the Baptist, John the Baptist said himself, because he was filled with the Spirit, and he was the one to reveal unto us the Lamb or the Christ. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. He came as that sacrifice, my God, for you and I. Hallelujah. He gave his life, hallelujah, for you and I. And notice what he said. He said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When they lifted him up on that cross, the Bible says that if they had known, hallelujah, that he was the Christ, they wouldn't have crucified him, hallelujah, they wouldn't have put him to death. Thank you, Lord, but they didn't know. Thank you, Lord. They didn't read the scriptures. It hadn't been revealed. My God, but Jesus was telling them from day one, thank you, Lord, when he was about his father's business, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Hallelujah, we ought to lift him up today. Hey, glory, we ought to magnify him today. You ought to clap your hands and give God praise on today. Hallelujah, because we've got a Savior. My God in heaven, hallelujah, Savior of mankind. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about Jesus. Hallelujah, he's that lily of the valley. My God, he's that bright and morning star. Hallelujah, he's our joy and sorrow. He's our hope for tomorrow. My God, my God. Notice what the scripture says. Verse number eight. It says, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And that scripture there means, hallelujah, that remember when he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. My God, and they came and got him in the garden uh, where he was praying, where he was seeking after God and sweat round down his face like great drops of blood. And he said, Father, if there be any other way, uh, remove this cup. And he prayed three times. And he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he found his disciples sleeping. And he said, why don't you start praying? Leash you into, into temptation. My God, hallelujah. And then Judas, he went already and got the people and showed him and portrayed him with a kiss. Oh, my God. And they took him. They took the Sanhedrin court. 
Hallelujah. They, they took them and they, they scourged them. They talked about them. Thank you, Lord. They had a mock trial. They had suborn witnesses against them. In other words, they had hired liars. Thank you, Lord, to talk about Jesus, to accuse Jesus. And then they took them, not only to them, but they delivered them unto Pilate. And Pilate wanted to let them go and gave them the option of either Barabbas or Jesus. And they chose Barabbas. Hallelujah. So he went from uh, prison. Uh, he went from council. And now the scripture says he went from prison and from their judgment. And that judgment was that he would die on the cross. That he would be crucified for you and I. That he would be put to death. Hallelujah. But the scripture says not a bone shall be broken. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that my God, that his sacrifice, that what he went through for you and I, the suffering servant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It was ordained by God before the foundation of the world. My God in heaven. Hallelujah. So notice, and he says, who shall declare his generation? Meaning that the work that Jesus started was cut off, my God. And, and he's saying that who shall take this gospel message and declare it to the nations? Who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare his righteousness, his salvation? Who shall, who shall believe on him? Hallelujah. And, and then take this message throughout the world. Hallelujah. To preach the gospel to every creature, to every nation. Who's going to stand up for Jesus? Who's going to trust in him in the midnight hour? Hallelujah. Even in these days and times, you've got to put your trust in Jesus. You've got to put your hope in him that is able to do exceedingly, that's able to do abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living, uh, for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. Ah, hallelujah, my God. In other words, uh, you got to pick up the cross. Hallelujah, you got to carry the torch. My God, you got to take this thing across the finish line. He that began a good work in you. Hallelujah, you've got to perform it. Hallelujah, as he will perform it in you, you've got to carry, hallelujah, the weight. You've got to endure the pain and the suffering. My God, you've got to let your light shine before men that they may see his good works and glorify his Father which is in heaven. In other words, he that began a good work in you, my God, you've got to finish it. He'll finish it, hallelujah, if you let him, hallelujah, if you seek him and if you call on him, he won't leave you, he won't forsake you, hallelujah, but you've got to, you've got to walk with him. Uh, you've got to testify of his glory. You've got to be his witness. My God, hallelujah, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, in the uttermost parts of the world, you've got to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We shall declare it, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll declare your generation. Lord, we'll lift you up. Lord, we'll magnify you. Hallelujah. In this day and age, hallelujah, we'll lift up the bloodstained banner. We'll magnify your name. We'll give you glory and honor. Hallelujah. We'll come boldly to the throne. Hallelujah. We'll lift you up, Lord. We'll magnify you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. And we'll give you glory and honor and the praise. My God, as we pet Kabosha. Hallelujah. My God, my God, the Holy Ghost is moving in this place. Hallelujah. We declare and decree healing. We declare and decree deliverance. We declare and decree strength and power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, thou art healed. In the name of Jesus, thou art delivered. In the name of Jesus, thou art set free to declare his generation. Hallelujah. To declare his anointing. Hallelujah. To declare his power. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Come on, saints. Can you just clap your hands with me? Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a praise. He's moving in our atmosphere. He's moving in this situation, in this condition. Yeah, he was the suffering servant. Yeah, he went through for you and I. Hallelujah. But now he's exalted. Now he's high and lifted up. Glory. Now he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We ought to magnify him. My God, we ought to praise him. Hallelujah. We ought to give him glory. Hey, even in these last days, my Lord. Now notice the scripture. Verse number nine, it says he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Now notice it talks more about his death, that he was buried. Hallelujah. Not only did Jesus die, the scripture says that he was buried. And not only was he buried, but he, was, he rose again on the third day. Three is a divine number of perfection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And he got up. Hey, he got up whole. He got up perfected. Thank you, Lord, my God. Hallelujah. So we see here, uh, he made his grave with the wicked. Hallelujah. So uh, he died. And he was, and he died, thank you, Lord, and he was buried with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Remember that Jesus, he had a borrowed tomb, thank you, Lord, Joseph of Arimathea, hallelujah, rich man, hallelujah, laid Jesus down in that tomb, and he was buried with the rich, hallelujah, and he identified. Notice, he had done no violence. Uh, rich people, I'm not saying all rich people, but some rich people, they make their riches through being violent, through being deceitful. But the scripture is letting you know that Jesus, he was not violent, nor was he deceitful. He didn't tell anybody about any lies or anything like that. Everything that Jesus said, Jesus spoke the truth. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, hallelujah, the G Jesus said, the I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Everything that Jesus wrote about, everything that Jesus told us about is truth. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can bank on it. Hallelujah. My God. The one thing that I do get excited about when I think about uh, Jesus and what he said, uh, and that is true. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead. Hallelujah. Yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth, he shall never die. My God, I'm banking everything I got. Hallelujah on those words. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Though this earthly tabernacle, though it may be dissolved. Hallelujah. But I got another. Hallelujah. Tabernacle. I got another body. Hallelujah. Come on, shot. Hallelujah. That's waiting on us. My God, my God. That's why I believe what Paul said. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Hey, and lay hold on that eternal life. Ah, my God. Come on and give God a praise. Notice what he said. Thank you, Lord. Let me wrap this lesson up. My God in heaven. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. As we look here in the scriptures. Hallelujah. It says. My Lord, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Now notice, God was pleased, not necessarily at the suffering and affliction that Jesus would go through, but he was pleased about what his suffering and affliction would accomplish. Hallelujah. Salvation for the whole world. Notice, the Bible says God so love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Hallelujah. We ought to quote that together. Can you quote it together with me? That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, he shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. And we, we're so glad today that that life is in Jesus. For that's why the scripture says it pleased the Lord to abuse him, to put him to grief. When he shall make his soul, there it is, an offering for sin. God got tired of those, those animal offerings that could not take away sin. But Jesus' sacrifice and his offering that he offered once and for all, it took away sin. The power of sin, the penalty of sin, and the effect of sin. Hallelujah. He took His sacrifice was the total package. Hallelujah for you and I. My God. So notice, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. His seed is you and I, my Lord. And he shall prolong his days. In other words, he shall bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Jesus' life, hallelujah, is everlasting. My Lord, his days are prolonged, hallelujah. Of his kingdom, there shall be no end. My God, hallelujah, my God in heaven. We ought, to get, we ought to get excited, hallelujah, about what we have here today that is in Jesus Christ. The scriptures are being fulfilled. The word of God is being fulfilled. It's being manifested, hallelujah, and we ought to praise God. Hallelujah. We, got, we are a part of a kingdom. Hallelujah. That is no like no other kingdom. Uh, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. My Lord. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. In other words, whatever the Lord has put in the hands of his son Jesus Christ, it shall prosper. My Lord. That's why the scripture says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful. Notice, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And the law of the Lord is Jesus Christ. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Hallelujah. And notice, it says, whatever he doeth, it shall what? Prosper. Hallelujah. As long as you stick with Jesus, as long as you abide in him and his words abide in you, you shall prosper. No man can take you out of his hand. You shall prosper. Hallelujah. That means that you shall accomplish. He shall accomplish every good work and every good deed in your life. You ought to clap your hands and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. And let me conclude here. Hallelujah. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Notice, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. He shall, uh, he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. Hallelujah. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Hallelujah. And call because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and, and made intercession for their transgressions. My friend, hallelujah, that concludes our, our Sunday school lesson. There's never enough time to get into the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But we're going to have to be subject to the spirit, my Lord. And I thank God for the suffering servant that if you trust in the Lord, if you have confidence in him, ye shall, hallelujah, experience his joy. You shall experience his peace. You shall experience his inheritance. So let us be encouraged. Let us be watchful. My Lord, I want you to stay tuned, Facebook family, as we come back at 11 o'clock. Hallelujah with our message for the hour, for the week. Hallelujah. And I thank God for each and every one of you that have tuned in with us. Thank you, Lord. And I can't wait to be with you. Hallelujah. In a few minutes. So we thank God for you. We elevate the name of the Lord. 
and let us be encouraged uh, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this Sunday school. We thank you for those that have tuned in and watched and listened. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord, that they'll share this message. Call other people. Hallelujah. And let them know that we're uh, here at this hour. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to send your tithes and your offerings, please mail them to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street. Hallelujah. Just send your check. Hallelujah. And our members, and we'll be grateful. We'll deposit them for you. We thank God for you. We'll see you at 11. Amen.